All right, hey students, um, I am going to read in this video two poems by Anne Bradstreet. The first one is called To My Dear and Loving Husband on page 15 of our textbook. And the second one is a little bit longer. It's called Upon the Burning of Our House and it's page 16 and 17, all right? As with all poems, I think they should be read twice. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna read it once through and then I'll take a moment, pause, and then I'll read it through again. Um, like you've heard me say before, the reason for this is that poems are less direct. It might be harder to completely understand the message and um, the heart, the point behind the poem the first time through. So please uh, really just engage your mind for both read throughs. And um, hopefully by doing so, you will uh, end the video better understanding what's going on. All right. So the first one is To My Dear and Loving Husband by Anne Bradstreet, page 15. If ever two were one, then surely we. If ever man were loved by wife, then thee. If ever wife was happy in a man, compare with me, ye women, if you can. I prize thy love more than whole mines of gold or all the riches that the East doth hold. My love is such that rivers cannot quench, nor aught but love from thee give recompense. Thy love is such I can no way repay. The heavens reward thee manifold, I pray. Then, while we live, in love let's so persevere, that when we live no more, we may live ever. All right. I'm going to read it through our second time to my dear and loving husband by Anne Bradstreet. If ever two were one, then surely we. If ever man were loved by wife, then thee. If ever wife was happy in a man, compare with me, ye women, if you can. I prize thy love more than whole mines of gold or all the riches that the East doth hold. My love is such that rivers cannot quench, nor aught but love from thee give recompense. Thy love is such I can no way repay. The heavens reward thee manifold, I pray. Then, while we live, in love let's so persevere, that when we live no more, we may live ever. Okay. This one is a little bit longer. Upon the burning of our house. Um, page 16 and 17. The uh, nice thing about both both of these poems is the titles really tell you what the main subject of the poem is, so that's helpful. <clears throat> Get a sip of water. This is a long one. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Upon the burning of our house by Anne Bradstreet. In silent night, when rest I took for sorrow near. I did not look. I wakened, was with thundering noise and piteous shrieks of dreadful voice, that fearful sound of fire and fire. Let no man know is my desire. I, starting up, the light did spy, and to my God my heart did cry to strengthen me in my distress and not to leave me succorless. Then, coming out, beheld a space, the flame consume my dwelling place. And when I could no longer look, I blessed his name that gave and took, that laid my goods now in the dust. Yea, so it was, and so t'was just. It was his own, it was not mine, far be it that I should repine. He might have all justly bereft, but yet sufficient for us left. When by the ruins oft I passed, my sorrowing eyes aside did cast. And here and there the places spy, where oft I sat and long did lie. Here stood that trunk, and there that chest, there lay that store I counted best. My pleasant things in ashes lie, and them behold no more shall I. Under thy roof no guest shall sit, nor at thy ta table eat a bit. No pleasant tale shall ever be told, nor things recounted done of old. No candle e'er shall shine in thee, nor bridegroom's voice e'er heard shall be. In silence ever shall, I'm sorry, in silence ever shall thy 
shall thou lie. Adieu, adieu, all's vanity. Then straight I gin my heart to chide, and did thy wealth on earth abide? Didst fix thy hope on mouldering dust? The arm of flesh didst make thy trust? Raise up thy thoughts above the sky, that dunghill mists away may fly. Thou hast an house on high erect, framed by that mighty architect, with glory richly furnished, stands permanent, though this be fled. It's purchased and paid for too, by him who hath enough to do, a price so vast as is unknown, yet by his gift is made thine own. There's wealth enough, I need no more. Farewell, my pelf, farewell, my store. The world no longer let me love. My hope and treasure lies above. I think that's really good. All right, here we go. One more time through. Take another sip. Page 16 and 17, Upon the Burning of Our House by Anne Bradstreet. In silent night, when rest I took, for sorrow near I did not look, I wakened was with thundering noise, and piteous shrieks of dreadful voice, that fearful sound of fire and fire. Let no man know is my desire. I, starting up, the light did spy, and to my God my heart did cry, to strengthen me in my distress, and not to leave me succorless. Then, coming out, beheld a space, the flame consume my dwelling place. And when I could no longer look, I blessed his name, that gave and took, that laid my goods now in the dust. Yea, so it was, and so t'was just. It was his own, it was not mine. Far be it that I should repine. He might of all justly bereft, and yet sufficient for us left. When by the ruins oft I passed, my sorrowing eyes aside did cast, and here and there the places spy where oft I sat and long did lie. Here stood that trunk, and there that chest, there lay that store I counted best. My pleasant things in ashes lie, and them behold no more shall I. Top of 17. Under thy roof no guest shall sit, nor at thy table eat a bit. No pleasant tale shall e'er be told, nor things recounted done of old. No candle e'er shall shine in thee, nor bridegroom's voice e'er heard shall be. In silence ever shall thou lie, adieu, adieu, all's vanity. Then straight I gin my heart to chide, and did thy wealth on earth abide? Didst fix thy hope on mouldering dust? The arm of flesh didst make thy trust? Raise up thy thoughts above the sky, that dunghill mists away may fly. Thou hast an house on high erect, framed by that mighty architect, with glory richly furnished, stands permanent, though this be fled. It's purchased and paid for, too, by him who hath enough to do. A price so vast as is unknown, yet by his gift is made thine own. There's wealth enough, I need no more. Farewell, my pelf, farewell, my store. The world no longer let me love. My hope and treasure lies above. All right, those are Anne Bradstreet's two poems in our textbook. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.